So I've got a piece of very dry and very dusty apple. And a couple of weeks ago I turned a piece of walnut and I mentioned I have quite a few of remnants of other turnings that I just can't throw them away. So I'm going to go through these and see what I can do with them. I'm going to see if we can get this turned today and see how dusty it is. It's been under my shed for five or six years. The bark is very thin. It's very flaky. It may stay on a little bit. It might not. Either way, I'm going to see if we can make a natural edge out of this. I'll get a flat spot in a hole in here for a worm screw. We'll get it mounted up and see what we can make out of this. Okay, I just sharpened my 5 8 bowl gouge. I'm going to do a little cutting from here and then we'll move up and cut down into the bark instead of under it. The reason I'm going to do that is I have a crack here that comes around and it's right there. I want to see if I can cut that away. It'll just make the piece stronger if I can get rid of any crack that's right here. So we're going to see what we have right now. Doing about 700 RPM. So I've got a little, uh, maybe a little rotten wood, a crack. I want to get this cleaned up. Maybe we'll see if we can reinforce that with something before we go any farther. But we're almost to the top now. I've only lost a small little piece of bark there. Here we might be cutting some of that off, so I think we're going to be okay. I'm going to reduce the size of that base and cut up through here. That'll just make that even a little bit better. And we'll just about have a shape there that I think we can use. Alright, not too bad. I like getting more of this anyways. This is where the apple really shines with this wood here. Okay, we're going to stuff something down in here and then we'll finish that up. Use some of the medium brown CA glue here. I'm going to flatten the bottom while the CA is drying and then we'll mark for a tenon.
Alright, I'm going to use the half inch bowl gouge. I want to get this CA cleaned up, finalize the shape, and then we will be ready to sand. About 800 RPM now. All right, I think it looks pretty good. I uh, do have some tool marks I want to clean up. Oh, it's a negative rig scraper for that. Okay, I think we'll get ready to do some sanding. Found a couple more places to put some CA in there, so now I'm going to go ahead and sand. I'll start with uh, 80 grit on a 2 inch disc, just holding the piece and sanding these areas by hand, and I'll spin it in reverse at about 400. We'll get it sanded up to 400, and I'll be back and I'll have it flipped around, and I'll put the finish on this side later after I figure out what I want to use. Flipped around, running really true, about 700 RPM. This underside went really good. I'd like to be able to finish this right now, but uh, we have something going on pretty soon. So I just want to at least start a cut, get an idea what it's going to look like, and we'll finish it tomorrow. Got the half inch bowl gouge, going to grab my face shield, and we'll make a cut. I think mostly what I wanted to look at is how well the bark's on. And it's really on pretty nice right here. Uh -oh. I'm going to go ahead and get it so it's cutting all the way around. And like I say, I'll be back tomorrow. That's it. I've got to move the tailstock anyway, so I think I've got a good idea how well that bark's on there and looking good. As it works out, I've got a couple more hours today I can work on this. I peeled as much bark out of this section that I could just to uh, maybe patch that in and maybe I guess that's the same one. I'm not missing that much bark actually.
All right, we'll just keep going deeper. Looks like I probably got at least an inch and a quarter to go. I think we can go ahead and get this sanded up. I decided that I should patch that bark on there before I sanded anything. So I just took the chuck and everything off. Much easier to work on. Let that CA cure out and get it back in the light and do the sanding. Just like that. Try to just kind of clean the bark up. I'm going to go over the inside without delay of turning and clean up where I see I glued some bark back in where it was missing. And then we'll sand it up to uh, 400, starting with 80. And I'm going to come back. I guess it's time to get a finish on it. I run it going forward, probably about close to 400. Alright, get this all sanded up and see you when we get the finish on it. Okay, time to put the finish on it. I sanded it to 400, buffed it out with a Scotch-Brite pad, and I'm going to use some shellac-based sanding sealer. Nice and smooth. Okay, that's what it's going to look like. We'll go ahead and get all the finish on this and uh, I'll do the underside off camera because it's certainly going to look just like this. So I'm pretty happy with that bark. I really didn't expect it to stay on and it's got some texture but it's uh, Smooth enough, I can put it on with this rag. So we'll go ahead and get a couple coats of this, two coats of finish. I'll come back and uh, we have a tenon to remove. All right, I've got all the finish on it. I did something a little bit different. I know I've never shown this, and I can't even remember if I ever did it before, but it really worked nice, so I'll show you that as soon as I get the tenon taken care of. I want to do a little sanding here and I just need to take that tenon down just a little bit to get below the base. So we'll do a little sanding and we will work on that tenon. Okay, I'm going to use a half inch bowl gouge. We're just going to take that down just a little bit. Alright, that should be below, and it is, so 
I really don't have a nub to take off. So I'll get this off and I'll sand this up on the bottom and get some finish on it and I'll come back and tell you what I did different here on the finish. Here it is and I think it is a beautiful piece of apple wood. Just look at the colors in there. So rich looking. I really like that look there a lot. It's just a great contrast with the heartwood and, and the sapwood and the multi-colors that are going on in there. There's the base. Finished 8 and 3 16 wide, 6 and a quarter this way, and it stands 3 and a quarter inches, and the base is 4 inches. And the bark, it stayed on. Pretty amazing. This piece sat under my pole shed for five or six years and it just looked all dried out. <laughs> it looked like all of that bark was going to fall off and it looked like it wasn't even going to have any colors in it. But it sure does. That finish just brought it all out. And speaking of the finish, I said I did something a little bit different. Well, I started with one coat of shellac based sandy sealer, the Zinser coat seal coat and then I decided I wanted to see what wipe on poly looked like. So I put two coats of bin wax, wipe on poly and I just love how that looks. Anyways this was a fairly easy live edge bowl to do out of a piece of wood that just didn't look like it was going to look like anything but it sure did and I had a lot of fun making this and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor, click that like button and feel free to leave a comment. Both of those things will really help my channel grow. I do lots of different types of turnings and you never know what might be next, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And a special thanks to all my current subscribers, you really mean a lot to me. So, till the next time, see you later.